Loss comes in many forms, and usually in unexpected ways. It can be devastating, leaving you facing an uphill struggle to go on with life without someone you thought would always be there. But life does go on, and even in the deepest despair, we can find hope. Welcome to Grief Relief with your hosts, Drs. Gloria and Heidi Horsley, brought to you by the Open to Hope Foundation, helping people find hope after loss. And now here's Dr. Gloria and Dr. Heidi. Welcome to our show. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley with my co-host, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, hello, Heidi. Hi, Mom. We have got a great show today. So we're going to have uh, Mar Mary Rockefeller Morgan on, who's an author and who has written about the twin experience on. So let's get started with the rolling. Okay. I'm Mary Morgan, and you've got Coping with the Loss of a Twin. The thing that makes twin loss unique and the bereavement journey special is the twin bond. Twins grow from the moment of conception in the womb in relationship. When twins are born, the beginning identity, the little I which we all develop, for twins is framed in a we. And when one of them dies, if they haven't developed an adequate sense of their own identity, they don't know who they are. Twins have said to me over and over again, that they feel like they're only half of themselves. The whole issue of twin loss is special to me because I am a twin myself and I lost my twin at 23 years of age. Having spent 27 years healing has left me with a deep sense of wanting to be able to help other twins. It takes much longer for twins to heal. Our relationship is not what we lose. We lose the physical manifestation of the other person. Mary, thank you for coming on the show today. You're Hi, so Mary. welcome. Hi, Heidi. That was an intense video. It really, I think, captures yeah. the twin experience and, and how unique it is. And one thing I love about it is that you said your experience with your brother, you knew him nine months before anybody else. You start getting to, to bond in the womb. I think this is the, the sort of big secret that um, is basically held and not even known about even within our own group of twins mm -hmm. until just recently now that they're doing womb studies with sonograms and they're beginning to see the relationship um, that twins have to each other that little that the little um, fetuses are actually reaching out to each other in intention intentional reaching out at 14 weeks of age I mean, that's extraordinary. That's, that's amazing, Mary. And I recently read something where a ba twins were born premature. You may have read about this. And one of the twins was dying. And they had them in separate incubators. And when they put them together, the one that was dying started to thrive. Yes. It's yeah. really true. Mm -hmm. I think that sense of, of growing and learning about existence and your life but learning that right up against somebody else, right in relationship to somebody else, is a huge thing, and it affects your entire life. Mm -hmm. You know, Mary, you were a special twin, as I said, because um, uh, I know that, that uh, as I said, people were riveted with your story. And uh, besides um, having talking about the experience of twins, which I think is very important for the twins out there, for people who want to read more, a little bit more about your story with Michael and going with your dad, to uh, try to find him in New Guinea and all that, they might want to get your book, A Memoir of Twin Loss and Healing, beginning with the end. So you do have some things in there about being, growing up in Botanical Hills, is that what yes. you call it? And a little farm, you know, you had a cow and plant, you, you know, kind of talked about growing up with Michael. Yes. So I think that's an important part. So I would suggest if you want to know more about that part of the story that you pick up this book uh, that Mary's written. And you can get yeah. it on Amazon, right? Yeah. Right. And, and what I try to do is I try to go through the whole healing journey um, with, with events and, and things that happen that might actually resonate not only with other twins but also people who've experienced deep personal loss. Also that whole issue of how when we've actually acknowledged the loss and are willing to 
allow the grieving, which actually brings in the healing, then what do we do as we move forward with our life? The whole piece of the book is about moving forward and what the specific issues for twins are. Mm -hmm. And how do you move forward without your twin who's always been a parallel traveler exactly. in life with you? And how do you form in, um, intimate relationships? It's so difficult for wow, twins. Wow, it impacts you way beyond. Yes. Mm -hmm. Way beyond even developing relationships later on. The and loss and of you that really twin. have to almost reframe the word in intimacy. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I needed to do with my husband, and, and I, he, bless his heart, was able to have the patience to really um, be, not be my twin, but mm -hmm. be there for me with his love. Mm -hmm. That's very big. And I know one of the uh, things I uh, read about in the book is there can be a certain amount of anger with a twin, you know, if you're not acknowledged that this is a special loss. I, I run a compassionate friends group, and uh, a twin last month, Mm -hmm. brought her mother to uh, Compassionate Friends to be helped, but didn't acknowledge the fact of how painful it was. And thank goodness for you, I was able, because I had met you and talked to you, I was able to say to her, but you're a twin. That is a very special loss. And it, you could just see that it just came over her, you know, like I've been acknowledged. Yeah. You know, it was so powerful. It was. That was very validating, because I was at that meeting. I think there's a huge misunderstanding mm -hmm. um, or lack of understanding, which really yeah. is not a criticism. Mm -hmm. It's just except that it is of our culture in terms of really understanding and being willing to see grief as part of life. Thank you.